If you are confused at all about what exactly happens at the end of Season 2, then stick around to the end of this video. Sponsored by Crypt TV. Welcome back to Things You Missed. The year is 1930, and not more than 11 seconds into Season 2, we've already got a guy going on a rampage against his family. Why is this guy so angry? And what does this all have to do with the rest of the season taking place on a rural farmhouse? What is the significance of this place, Harbor? Why does Luxie come after this family? And most importantly, what does any of this have to do with Season 1? These are all questions I'll be answering on today's episode, but let's start at the beginning of Season 2, Episode 1. <laughs> Our location is New York City, and this man, Robert Capshaw, has just finished taking out his family. And I'm not talking about taking them out for dinner. He hears an angry mob outside and finishes the job by slitting his own throat. The blood lands on the newspaper article of Robert and his twin brother, James Capshaw. The spatter only covers Robert's half of the photo, telling us that the brother is probably still alive. The same trick using the blood to show who's no longer alive is used again later in the season on the daughter's drawing of the family. But why did Robert go crazy on his family? The answer is in the setting. As we saw earlier, this scene takes place in March of 1930. It looks like the Capshaw twins opened their bank in the heat of the Great Economic Depression. For all of you international viewers, not a good time to open a bank in the USA. Now the other brother, James Capshaw, took the dignified approach and got the heck out of there. He moved his family to this remote farmhouse. This day to night transition is really cool. Not only does it remind me of Hereditary, but instead of using that annoying click noise that the daughter in Hereditary makes, we hear one tick from the stopwatch that Luxie carries around. Using the stopwatch to show the passage of time in Luxie? Very cool. I couldn't help but think this next scene was another homage to a 2018 horror movie. Was anyone else reminded of A Quiet Place? So anyway, James Capshaw goes to check things out at the barn when he finds a foreclosure notice from his own bank. Interesting note here, this stuff at the farmhouse doesn't take place right after the scene in New York City. The date of the foreclosure notice is Monday, August 1st. The next time August 1st falls on a Monday after this opening scene, assuming that the series uses real world calendars, is August 1932. So two years go by between this and this. But it seems that even in these two years, James hasn't let go of the fact that his business failed. Because as we've seen previously in season one, the fact that James's note is written on a dollar bill is further proof that it's the bank started by him and his brother that he was unable to release when he started his new life in the country. We never actually got to see what body part Luxy would have taken from him though, because our buddy Dead Meat beats him to the kill marking probably the first time that James has added to his own kill count, which I think might be cheating in a way. I don't know, I don't make the rules, but if I went onto a horror movie set and placed a bunch of things you missed all around, would that really be fair? To add to the mystery in a sense, one of the thieves gets stabbed by a pitchfork off camera, and we never see if Luxy is responsible or not. I personally don't think that he would have gotten that deep of a stab just from falling on the fork, but if Luxie is responsible, then this is the only victim who doesn't receive a note. Also, no body part is taken from this victim. I think it's a new side of Luxie. Like, if you try to interfere with his dealings, he'll just straight up kill you. Nightmare on Elm Street, anyone? Before we move on from this first episode, I think it's important to note that each character's fatal flaw is set up here in episode one. The second episode is about the other thief. We can see his remorse start to kick in when the blood starts to shed, something that he probably did not sign up for when he agreed to become a thief. He finds that his pocket watch has been replaced by the Luxie watch at the end of episode one, and the second episode finds him regretting his actions, having nightmares about his dead thief buddy, who by the way looks way too happy to have a pitchfork going through his torso, and eventually Luxie rips him in half. 
which is representative of him getting half of the share of whatever it is that they were stealing with the third guy out of the picture. The wife, Mary Capshaw, can be seen clutching her pearls in the first episode, which she does again in her episode, episode three. You can just see her general discomfort being at the farmhouse, and her episode's title, The Second Love, tells me that her love for her family falls second compared to material things, like her fancy New York apartment, her necklace, and high heels. She's ultimately given the choice between her family and her material possessions when her deceased son appears before her, with her necklace that was broken in the previous scene now fully intact. She goes for the necklace first, and as you can probably imagine, Luxy doesn't like that, and takes her heart because her heart was in the wrong place. She was in that marriage out of the love for money and material things, not love for her family. Then we've got the older brother, David Capshaw, played by my buddy Johnny Birchtold. He can be seen carrying around this bear, which formerly belonged to his late little brother. I know a lot of people were confused by his fatal scene because he eventually does rip the bear's head off in an attempt to show Luxie that he's not holding on to his deceased sibling. However, he still does pay the price. I would compare this to the woman letting go of the ring in the very first episode in season one, and the father from season one who throws away his dead daughter's birthday cake. Despite the fact that these characters are able to let go of their physical possessions, possessions, they are still targeted, because what Luxie is looking for is an emotional release, and David Capshaw never really has that moment, so he's left with his head turned around 180 degrees. Like the father from season 1, he's punished because he's still looking backwards, not forwards. So that covers all of the characters who had their lives taken by Luxie, but there are also two characters who survive this time around, Dead Meat's character Raymond and the little girl Leah Capshaw. Leah seems to be the one who's working with Luxie this season leaving the note on the back of her picture, crossing off the family members as she takes them out, and being the only one to see Luxie early on and not really look scared. I think that Leah already had an encounter with Luxie and she was able to release whatever it was that she was holding in, just like Jenny was eventually able to do in season one before becoming Luxie's assistant. Leah also bears a strong resemblance to the dead daughter in season one, episode three. More on that later. Then we've got Raymond, who gets his buddy's blood poured on him. Carry anyone? and Luxie curiously just lets him go. In order to explore the reason why, I'm gonna to refer to James's recent kill count video on dead meat. Roll it. But a deeper look into Raymond's soul, murder and all, leaves Luxie a little less smiley than usual, and he drops Raymond to the ground. Guess this guy didn't have anything to release, so he takes all his pieces and walks off into the woods. So my analysis of what's happening here is that Raymond is a sociopath. He doesn't hold on to anything, so he has nothing to release. I also think he's most likely going to be working with Luxie in the future as one of the assistants, just like Jenny and Leah. I think the shot where Raymond is first introduced also kind of suggests that there's some similarity between him and Luxie. Also, at the very end of James's Kill Count video, there's another little clue. And of course, huge thanks to Crypt TV for partnering with me for this Kill Count. Again, make sure you subscribe to them because there will be more of me on that channel in the future. Just saying, he's probably not making that up. But now we can get into the real interesting things you missed, the clues about the ending. After a hand comes out of the teddy bear, Evil Dead 2 anyone? and Luxie ultimately kills David, the little sister can finally scratch off the last of her family members, and she returns to Luxie with the stopwatch. Then, this happens. Notice how the new hands are wearing blue gloves instead of red. Also, notice if you look at this shadow, the new Luxie has something attached to its head. Let's look back to the original drawing done by Leah. You can see the Luxie hiding in the dark, looming above the Capshaw family. You can see the dad, the mom, the brother, the sister, and the deceased younger brother with his teddy bear. But what's this other character hiding in the dark behind Luxie? I think that is the second Luxie. If the original is made up of the body parts of those who could not release and wears a suit, maybe this other version, essentially the baby Luxie, wears a bow on its head. I think the new Luxie will be made up of the body parts acquired throughout season two. You can even see that the head is divided vertically, much like the thief who got torn in half. But what happens with the second Luxie and how does this affect the original Luxie? 
I think now is a good time to address the timeline of events. Obviously, both seasons take place in the past, but where do they fall chronologically? We know the exact date of season two, but we don't know exactly when season one takes place. The episode title suggests that season two takes place after, like how the first season has an episode called The Wedding Hand, and the second season has an episode called The Second Hand, or how the mistress mind in the first season has the counterpart The Second Love in season two. However, I've come to the conclusion that season two is a prequel. In rewatching season one, I noticed this photo with a pickup truck in the background. It looks like a more modern vehicle, and I'm no car expert, but I looked up what a pickup truck looks like in the 30s, and since then, and came to the conclusion that season one is more or less modern day. That's when it all came together for me about how the two seasons are related. The end of season two shows the creation of the new Luxie, then pulls out and shows us again the name of the area that they're in, Harbor. In episode four of season one, 13 high school kids are poisoned and die. If you look at the banners in the background, you'll see the name of the school, Harbor High. This is the same area that Luxie ends up prowling throughout season one, which takes place 80 to 90 years later. The spread out farmhouses in the middle of nowhere eventually become a community. A high school is built, but Luxie remains in the area all the while to make sure its citizens always release their sorrows. Remember how I said that Leah looks a lot like the guy's daughter in season one, episode three? They aren't the same person or the same actress, but I would theorize that the girl and her father are descendants of Leah Capshaw. So the big question becomes, what happens to the second Luxie with the blue gloves? Well, you better subscribe to Crypt TV to find out in the next season of Luxie. Of course, you'll be treated to more scary short films every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. In addition to their three videos a week, Crypt TV releases limited edition merch, like this awesome Luxie shirt I'm wearing right now. If you want a chance to get your own, just sign up for the Crypt newsletter, and you'll be the first to hear about new designs. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested. Next video, I'll be discussing Sunny Family Cult and the origin of Luxie. Tap or click the video on the left to go back and rewatch all of Luxie season two so you can let me know what I missed in the comments. Or watch my things you missed on the first season of Luxie by going to the video on the right. Until then, I will see you in the next one, assuming we both survive.